All right. Well, welcome everyone. Um, like Ollie said, we had to wait a bit longer than expected for this one, thanks to customs, but we're finally here. Um, before we get started, usual housekeeping. Uh, we recommend having as many glasses as we have whiskeys. So in this case, it's six because I can totally count. Um, if you have the glassware for it, just to kind of compare. Uh, as usual, please don't drive after the tasting. Um, these ones are all cast strength. Um, so we're in for a big one tonight, which is exciting. Um, and all of our tastings are recorded as well for the guys who couldn't join us tonight. I know we had a few um, sending their sorries because obviously we're changing the date and everything, customs. Um, but yeah, please pop your tasting notes and, and questions and stuff in the chat. Um, we don't have a guest tonight, so I'm flying solo and I've done quite a bit of research on, on the brand, but it's kind of hard because it's a little bit uh, unknown and they really, the website itself is like, we bottle whiskey, that's it. <laughs> so um, without too much further ado, we'll crack into it. The tasting order is in the chat already. Um, and I won't make you guys wait too much. If you wanted to pour out the Manic Moore Dram number one, uh, feel free to get into that. But we're discussing all things whiskey agency tonight. So this is an independent bottler out of Germany, uh, bottled by, I'm going to absolutely butcher this name, but Karsten Elchrich, uh, very fancy, regal sounding German name. Um, but Carson's one of the organizers for the Whiskey Fair, which is held in Limburg, Germany, which is quite a famous uh, whiskey festival. And for those who are unaware of the German market, it is absolutely massive. So kind of the main markets in Europe for whiskey are Italy, France, the Netherlands, and Germany. Uh, pretty much if a bottle hasn't gone through Germany, it's gone through Italy guaranteed. Uh, and if you find older bottles that have um, paper stamps, uh, tax stamps over the top of them, they're usually a sign that it's been through Italy. Um, but Carsten started sourcing casks to be bottled exclusively for um, the Whiskey Fair show. And it ended up snowballing into starting his own independent bottling brand, which I think is probably how a lot of guys in Europe start out. Um, Whiskey Agency was launched in 2008, and ever since then, it's just been bottling casks, flying under the radar. Um, we don't get a massive amount of Whiskey Agency bottlings in Australia, um, but luckily we do seem to get some really, really cool ones um, of what they bottle. So uh, let's chat a little bit about this Manic Moore. Um, so Manic Moore, if you guys aren't familiar, super underrated, um, Speyside Distillery built in 1971. So it is very young pickings as far as Scottish whiskey distilleries go. Um, Diageo built it as a sister distillery to Glen Mossy, uh, which is another one of their blending single malts. Um, and there's no official bottling for outside of the flora and fauna series. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is a 13 year old ex-bourbon cask, most likely. Um, these whiskies were bottled for uh, China. So they were actually bottled for the whiskey firm bar um, in China, who also do distribution of whiskey agency in China. Um, so we got them through a guy we know. <laughs> he does uh, a lot of distribution uh, in the Asian market. And oftentimes because um, the translation is like not the easiest. Um, they'll just do barrel. So the cask type on this one says barrel. Uh, oh, can't hear me, John. Hopefully I might move closer to the laptop to my work. Um, but yeah, so it just says barrel. Uh, I've seen bottlings from Japan uh, that have a similar casking um, and maturation statement on them. So um, usually it just means expert and barrel um, for the most part. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, of course it's aged in a barrel. That's, that's how whiskey is made. So I'd be really interested to see if you guys think it's, it's got anything else on it, if it's a refill or anything like that. 
But um, for, for all of you guys here, is this anyone's first time having Manic Mora? David, yeah. What do you think? That your opinion is most valuable right now. <laughs> so love to hear what you guys think. Bobby, it's your first time. It's, it's so uncommon to see in independent bottlings as well. Um, so because it's a blending whiskey for Diageo um, and for the Johnny Walker blends, we almost never see it even in indie bottlings. They do not give up a lot of casks. Um, and because they're relatively young, they don't have any crazy massive age statements out there either. So I think probably 16 years old, 18 years old is the oldest Manic Moore I've ever seen. But yeah. Howard, I totally agree on the lemon meringue nose. That is spot on. Mm. Yeah, it's such like a, like a fruit custard tart kind of thing to it. Mm. Yeah, what do we think? Are we enjoying this one? Right, yeah, so David's got the nod. Oh, yes. <laughs> but yeah, super, super good. Citrusy as well, Michael. Yeah, I completely agree. I think as well, because it's just the, is it the nine of us? If you did want to put your hand up, I can let you unmute as well so we can ask questions or give tasting notes or whatnot. I think. It's probably a lovely little intimate one, and I feel like I'm talking to myself half the time. <laughs> Bit acidic. Yeah, it's got um that whiz fizz thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, awesome. Well, while you guys are enjoying that, I'll kind of finish off a little spiel about whiskey agency. Um, like I said before, there's like no information about them technically. Um, I think that's kind of common with a lot of the German independent bottlers is they're like very much an enigma. Um, there's a, a couple of guys, um, even like the guy behind Blackadder who it's like, I bottle this stuff, but you know nothing about me. And I turn up to shows in the craziest attire ever and people are like, that's him. Um, so they, they are quite interesting. Um, However, Whiskey Agency predominantly focuses on single casks um, and they're not fussed about the age or the cask type or whatever it happens to be. Um, it's just the quality of the whiskey. Um, yeah, I, I agree, Michael. I think it's probably just an expert on cask as well. Carson is a total legend. Dominic, have you met him? Perhaps, yes. I wouldn't surprise me, not yet. <laughs> I'm sure you stalk him like a weirdo at Whiskey Fair in Lindbergh. <laughs> um, but yeah, for the most part, uh, Whiskey Agency is better known for collaborating with bars. Um, so a lot of their releases tend to be um, collaborations with uh, bottle shops or bars, uh, particularly in the Asian market, like this one, obviously being a collaboration with the whiskey firm. Um, but they also have a number of sub-brands. So um, their sub-brands include The Perfect Dram, uh, Liquor Library, which we've seen a little bit of here in Australia. I know that they did a collaboration or they did something for Casa de Vinos. Um, they have another brand, which is Private Stock. Uh, and my personal favourite, which is impossible to find, they've got a sub-brand called Liquid Sun. Um, there was an Alta Vine like five years ago that was amazing and blew my mind and you cannot get any liquid sun bottles in Australia as far as I've looked so far. Um, but yeah, Bobby, the, the bottlings are all over the bars, but it's all like bar collaborations. And yeah, the Three Rivers collab in Japan, that was like four or five years ago now. But yeah, so it's definitely, definitely one that like, exists but doesn't really you know 
shout from the rooftops, I suppose. Um, but yeah, excellent. Well, I think we might move on to whiskey number two, which is the Brook Laddie, which I think will be really interesting to talk about. I like to save some of my whiskey, so I've got to shake it out like a weirdo through the uh, pourer. <laughs> but yeah. Um, all righty. So given the crew here tonight, I probably won't go too much into Brook Laddie Distillery. I'm sure you guys are pretty familiar. You might have seen it. You might have heard of it. Um, you might have tried some before, obviously a very iconic um, Isla distillery. Um, but this is really interesting. So I don't think it says on the label, um, but this is a river salts cask. And again, butchering pronunciation. Um, but yeah, river salts is a really, really interesting um, type of French fortified style wine. So um, one of your favorite Isla distilleries, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's produced, um, again, apologies. My pronunciation is awful, uh, but River Salts is produced in the languedoc Luson region of France. Um, so it's in the Southern France um, and it's similar to musket style. Um, but it includes a couple more grape varietals than is used in musket. Um, so you've got um, white Grenache grapes and red Grenache grapes as well. Um, and there's two types of river salts. There's river salts blanc, which is the white star, and river salts rouge, which is the red star. At least they made that easy on us. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so this single cask comes from the batch of experimental French wine casks that Brook Lady laid down in the 2010s. Uh, you guys might have seen some um, pop up for their um, staff series uh, back when they were putting different staff members on the bottles um, or you know a couple of other independent bottlers have gotten their hands on some of these uh, whiskies and some of these barrels but most of the most of the cast would have been sourced by the parent company um, so Brook Laddie is owned by Remy Quantro so they own Remy Martin and Quantro obviously uh, so a lot of these wine casks would have come from really incredible um, chateaus and, um, and wineries and stuff like that around southern France. So, yeah, they are not doing, Brooklyn is not doing as many independent bottlings um, or selling to as many independent bottlings. We've definitely seen them get more scarce uh, and pretty much only people who owned barrels before, you know, the year 2020 uh, are still able to access um, a lot of Brook Laddie single casts, as we've seen with like Dramful and stuff like that. Um, so it was, it was always very exciting to see a Brook Laddie independent bottling. I haven't even smelt this yet, but rosy floral and Coca-Cola. Yeah, I love that. So I've got that kind of like flan baked flan tart thing where it's sweet but not super sweet mm. Ooh. pork fat there's um there's always something very pork porky <laughs> i suppose about um some of that pork laddie that's not peated but it is very salty so very, very cool. Mm. It'll be interesting to see as well how kind of Brook Laddie moves forward because we've seen them release their own cognac and wine casks. I think they recently did a Sauternes cask core release, the SC01. I think it was Sauternes. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see and compare in future indie bottlings of the Brook Laddies in one cast versus, versus their, you know, existing ones. The SC was great, but I think, I don't know, could have used more alcohol, more ABV on it. So <laughs> I think that's the, the Australian whiskey curse. 
the PC, yeah, the Port Charlotte SEO one. Yeah, really good. Um, but yeah, so I think as well, um, Brooke Luddy has also done some, again, butchering it, Jurasson casks, um, which are white style desert wines um, and hermitage red wine casks. So a French red made from Shiraz grapes, but we're, it'll be interesting to see some of these like um, vin du naturel or like natural wine casks coming up from Brooke Luddy in the next couple of years. Um, but yeah, they're just going from strength to strength. Uh, so yes. Mm. Anyone else got any tasting notes? Or did I ruin it with pork fat? Hmm. Let me see. Hmm. Yeah, salty pork crackling. 100%. It's like muskiness in the taste. Alrighty, I think I've fixed it so that you guys can unmute yourselves if you would like. I'm very bad at technology, so let me know if it's not working. <laughs> yeah, it's working now. Hey, there we go. All right, that's a bit better. It's nicer to like feel interactive. Um, slight muskiness in the taste. Yeah, like completely. It it is. So how old is it? 11 years old. It's got that, this is going to sound rude, old boy whiskey vibe of, you know, <laughs> kind of thing you drink in a, in a leather armchair. Uh, yeah. Ooh. All righty. Now, whiskey number three uh, is probably one that a lot of you were super excited about and super waiting for um and i will say when i was selecting this tasting order i was like am i really gonna put little freud right bang in the middle <laughs> but i went through and i smelled them all and the whiskeys coming after this are so punchy um and so intense i was like it would do a dishonor to the Lafroig if i put it anywhere else in the in the queue um, but yes, so this is a secret Isla, which is actually not secret at all. Um, again, uh, it, I don't know how they get away with the lack of oversight from these distilleries. I know, again, um, that previous bottling I was talking about from Acorn, where it just said barrel for maturation, that was a Laphroaig and it had Laphroaig printed big bold letters on the front of it. And I was like, nobody from Scotland is watching. <laughs> they could get away with calling it actually Laphroaig. Um, and there are certain roundabouts. I think we had a tasting with Whiskey Age, Whiskey Blues a while ago, and they were like, yeah, we could, we could totally call it Laphroaig. They let us do that. And I'm like, how? No clue. But um, yeah, so Secret Isla Laphroaig. Um, this is another cask of a parcel from the 1990 and 1991 Lafroigs and Ardbergs. So back when they both belonged to, I believe it was Allied Distillers, there was a big batch laid down uh, and that has just been going from cask broker to cask broker and just kind of floating around on the market. And we're finally starting to see some of those casks getting bought and bottled. Uh, and this is one of them. So. All of that, um, all of the casks that are in those batches uh, that are going around at the moment are all pre Beam Suntory ownership. So, uh, Beam Suntory came in 2010, I think it was. Um, but yeah, so this is all stuff that was laid down before current ownership. Um, really, really cool. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if anyone other than probably uh, Dominic, <laughs> Dominic's probably hoarded all of the uh, 1990 samplings of Laphroaig, but um, some of our, yes, you have hoarded all of them. Um, 
but yes, a lot of our previous tastings with for independent bottlers, we have actually had the occasional uh, 1990 Lafroig, um, and I think it'd be really interesting to kind of parallel them and, and compare them. Um, I sadly don't have that many of mine. I think I gave Dominic one. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's super, super interesting to kind of see and compare. And even to like modern Laphroaig, it's just so much sweeter almost. Let me know if you guys are getting that. Howard Classic Damp Campfire Nose. Yeah, I can totally see that. It's, it's got this watermelon rind cleanness to it though, for me. Like, yeah, Tony's got 40 to 50 from this parcel alone. I mean, look, we've all got to have a goal in life, right? <laughs> if collecting 1990s Laphroaigs is your goal, power to you. <laughs> mm. Oh, wow. All right, you're not getting this sample off me. <laughs> right, this is as well, coating the palette. Yeah. So I know some of you know me very well, maybe not everybody, but I shockingly don't really like Laphroaig. There have been about four Laphroaigs I've liked in my entire career. I've tried about 300. I love this one. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> 1990s Laphroaig is the new 73 space ad. Yeah, well, I, I suppose 1990s Laphroaig is probably cheaper than 1973 space ads, but not by not by that much cheaper. Um, but yeah, that's that's amazing. That's really good. I'm very upset by that now. <laughs> so there we go. My hands on a bottle. Maybe if there's some left. Mm. It's got this like green melon clean thing to it. Have you guys ever had green melon candy from Japan? No, that's all right. It's okay. No, I, I ate a lot of weird stuff when I was in Japan. But um, yeah, it, it, there's this always like sweet but not sweet, like rock melon kind of thing. There's a lot of rock melon on this. Yeah, really, really cool. Hmm. Well, I'll be excited to see what everyone votes for in the poll later, because that will be really telling. I'm not allowed to vote, but this will be up there for me. Mm, yeah, more than Melbourne. Mm. Awesome. Did you guys have any questions about whiskey agency or any of the bottlings or anything like that? pop through or unmute yourselves to ask. I know it's a it's a little bit harder because I'm not from the company. Um, hopefully one day we could get Karsten on one of our Zooms, but uh, that's a, a wish list thing for the moment. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, I will do my best to answer them about the, the brand. All right, well, we might move on to dram number four then. Let me put that one in. So this is a Bunahaven Moenia. I believe it's pronounced Moenia. I've been to the distillery, still can't bloody pronounce it. Um, but this is actually peated. Um, I wasn't certain until I opened it and smelled it, but it's definitely got a, a light peat on it. Now it smells even sweeter after the frog though. Mm, this one smells like candy too. Dang, maybe that's my brain telling me I need candy. But yeah, so, uh, Moenia is peated Bunahava. It's peated to about 38 ppm, which is a little bit lower than a lot of other um, Isla distilleries, which go between like 40 and 50 
ppm. Um, but uh, typically in independent bottlings, it'll either say Bunhaven Moynia or it'll say Steosha, um, which is uh, uh, Loch Steosha, uh, one of their water sources. But uh, this whiskey has been fully matured in a ex bourbon uh, hogshead or hoggy for sure. Hmm. Hmm. I'm seeing a frown, Howard. Nah. You can unmute yourself and talk. <laughs> I, I, I did do that, nothing happened. It's very flat on the taste. Hmm. But disappointing after the uh, Lefroig. Yeah. I agree with Michael and the Redskins on the nose, but yeah, it's got a little bit of this. Um, have you ever had those like green pimento peppers? Like the Italian pimento peppers that are just like really sharp and spicy ish, but not really spicy. They're more pickled. Got a little bit of that on it, surprisingly. If you told me this is a Kalila, I'd believe you. Like, I really, it's really not typical for Banana Hmm. That is so interesting. I'm so glad we did not do that before the <laughs> frog. Hmm. <laughs> what does everyone else think of this one? Michael, what do you think of the palette? Yeah, not much color from the, yeah, not much color from the cask at all. I will say, I don't know what your samples of the Lecheg look like, but mine looks like bloody water and it's supposed to be a refill sherry cask. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I probably agree with Howard. It's quite flat to be honest. Yeah. Uh, uh, really don't know why. I mean, there's still a lot of peat there, and definitely that's on the palate and the finish, but it's really quite flat on the palate as well, you know? Yeah. You don't get much of the peat on the nose, but definitely you get the peat on the palate and through the finish. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think the nose is like great. It draws mm -hmm. you in, and then you're just like, oh, no, I don't know. Yeah, where's the, candy? Where's, where's the candy going? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's it's one thing the word. Hmm. So, Dominic, how did we get these Chinese whiskey agency bottles, typically Chinese buyers bottles, and send up these? Yeah, so we, um, we actually uh, ship um, some whiskeys to Bank of Malt, um, which is a, a bottle shop I believe um, in the China market uh, and so when he got his hands on some of these bottles he was like did you guys want any and we're like yes <laughs> you know we're not gonna like a gift horse in the mouth um, so yeah we we good mates with um, the guys at Bank of Malt um, and so sometimes we can get our hands on stuff for the Chinese market um, that we wouldn't typically manage to get in Australia um, Chag and the Bemore, which I'm super excited about the Bemore actually. Um, I think we got a couple extra bottles of those, um, but yeah, it was not a lot. Um, and it was, yeah, just through a mate. So, yeah. Well, I'm a little bit heartbroken about this when I have it. <laughs> it's like, sounds great on paper, but yeah. Super interesting. I think it probably could have done from like a more active cask and then like a second maturation in a more active cask for a little bit longer. But yeah, I will say it is still very nice to get um, Bunahav and Moenia um, where we can. 
Um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware they are cutting back on the amount of peated uh, whiskey production that they do at Bonnehaven. Um, so they've increased the capacity of the stills because um, they were running at like 60%. Um, they actually gave them a polish in December of 2020, 2021, 2021 it was. Um, so they're nice and shiny and a lot of people are very upset about that um, because they're like, oh, they're too shiny, too clean looking. Um, but yeah, they are not seeing as much demand for their peated spirit. They did provide some for the Johnny Walker blends um, while Kalilik was closed, but there's just not enough demand for it, um, unfortunately. Uh, and even amongst independent bottlers, there's not a lot of demand for it. So they are predominantly keeping it for um, older age statements, um, hand fill bottles, um, special releases and stuff like that, obviously face bottlings um, and whatnot. So we will still see peated Bunahava, but just not as much as we're used to, um, or not as much as we currently get. Um, I will say I did pick up an old peated Bonnehaven hand fill at the distillery, which hopefully will be on a future tasting, um, which I'm very excited about. Um, I'm sure probably a sample is not payment enough for carting that thing uh, <laughs> all the way back. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited. Um, Michael the man might come back in 10 to 20 years. Maybe it, it's just so hard to tell. And I mean, you end up uh, essentially with the system that well, with the situation that they have in Japan where like the prices and the demand when there was none for no age statement um, Japanese whiskies was absolutely bonkers um, but we're starting to see it calm down now um, yeah a bottle of Hibiki 12 does not set you back as much as it did two years ago <laughs> so and yeah there's age statements coming out of Nika now with the UHE 10 year old um, back on the market so we shall see hopefully they do bring it back but we should hopefully still be able to get our hands on some every now and then but yeah so whiskey number five the Lechegg 2010 refill sherry butt which I do not believe because it is paler than me uh, that's pretty pale <laughs> but yeah hopefully i know you guys know how much i love the shake so let's see how this goes um but yeah so obviously the shake distillery from tobamori um in contrast to bunahavan they're actually making more the shake than tobamori at tobamori distillery so uh, we will get plenty more peated whiskey out of tobamori than unpeated um, essentially they're going to do with the unpeated Tobamori spirit, what they're doing with the Moine, keep it for older releases, keep it for limited releases. Um, and we will be seeing more Lechegg, um, coming into the market, um, which is excellent. Yeah, Michael, I was thinking a third or fourth fill. Like, I think this is an exhausted cask. I think it's like, they're, <laughs> they're like, oh, I'm, I'm just gonna, oh, I'm gonna push it for as much as I can get out of it. But yeah, 11 years in refill sherry. Super, super interesting. Mm. So yeah, this cask might be at the end of its life. Oh, well, you do get that sweetness on the palate a bit. It's, it's got the sherry nose, but not the sherry taste. Hmm. It's There's definitely like a sweetness, like rock candy. That you don't typically get from bourbon cask lechegg. I find bourbon cask lechegg tends to be more sandy and a little bit earthier and dirtier. Super interesting. Definitely does not drink at the 51%, 51.3% that it is though. Definitely does not feel that hot. But yeah. What are, what are you guys saying? What are you tasting? What are you feeling? What are you vibing? You really just get the spoke. That's all you really get. You're not getting much else. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely the 
I just took a whiff of my jumper after a campfire and like all I can smell <laughs> is that you're like campfires smell so lovely and then when you smell them later on your clothes you're like this is revolting <laughs> but in a good way <laughs> it's revolting a um, bit like Wally Water again a bit flat yeah yeah I completely get what you mean Honestly, that, that LaFroig might have done us in as well. <laughs> Just disappointment station after the LaFroig. But I think I definitely prefer this to the Bonnehaven, for sure. Are you guys, yeah, this over the Bonnehaven? David says yes. Mm. Mm. I think what's interesting as well is to kind of think about the so the whole set of these um all six of them were a set for the whiskey firm bar in china right so when you're an independent bottler selecting barrels for a specific bar or a specific market and stuff like that like you're selecting in line with what that you try and you know go in line with what that market um wants um i know that when we try and talk about you know to bottlers about exclusives we try and get something that fits in with that big bombastic Australian um, preference for whiskey flavors so it kind of makes you think that like is this what the Chinese market is really keen on they want something clean and like that barely even tastes like whiskey at all <laughs> something um because I, I I think like when I talk about Johnny Walker blue label with consumers I'm like as a product it's fine but for me drinking it I don't like it because it's been blended to be so approachable and so inoffensive to everybody that it's just boring right um and and yeah and I think like amazing blends are blends that have a flavor in mind they're not just like this is for somebody who doesn't like whiskey or like who I need to offend nobody with this whiskey. And I, I wonder if, um, you know, that's kind of what some of these whiskeys that we've got, because obviously like the Manic Moor is just sweet, happy, free, fun times. And then the Bonahaven and the Lechegg are both peated, heavily peated, but nothingness, they're, they're inoffensive. It's like they're smoke, but like, that's about it. Dominic, the water brings out a bit more fruit, but not dramatically, yeah interesting yeah so you know i always kind of wonder when we see especially um collections or like sets and stuff um i don't know if you guys ever saw the liquor library um bottlings for australia but they were like um bombastic old uh ex-bourbon cask highland park and stuff like that and i think there was an ardmore as well um but they were like big rich whiskeys and I think that's the Australian flavor profile is like big high ABV big rich uh, whiskeys that'll slap us about and, and wake us up in the morning <laughs> kind of thing so it's really really interesting to see I've not been to China um I don't know what their whiskey drinkers are like but yeah it's gonna be very very interesting hmm. well shall we move on to the last whiskey. Um, I feel like I've powered through these very quickly. So please, if you've if you've got so many glasses left and you want to go back and take your time, um, I don't mind at all. And actually, I'd be curious if anyone's got some and is going back to some of the early whiskeys after the Bonahaven and Leche to see how they compare. Um, but yes, whiskey number six so the like in terms of comparing this to the other secret isla um again it's not supposed to know but we're allowed to put the more on the bottle apparently um uh, but again part of the same parent owners um so the more is a beam suntory um whiskey as well same as the Freud now um it is very interesting actually um when I was on Isla I went to the woolen mill because I really love wool uh, and it was really interesting to see how the local Isla people 
perceive the Beam Suntory um, uh, parent company. Um, it's really interesting. A lot of the Isla guys think that um, the Lefroig owners um, and the, the Moore owners are a little bit offish um, and they've got their head office in the Czech Republic, I think, or Czechia is called now. Um, but it's really, really interesting to see how how the, the, the islanders, I suppose, um, feel about it. But yeah, so this is Secret Isle of Amor. Um, again, it doesn't really explain the casking on it. It says it's matured in a barrique, um, but that's just a standard cask size for a lot of different wine types. Um, doesn't state what kind of wine, so you could probably comfortably assume either a red wine or a port barrique. I'm kind of leaning towards red wine because in my little ring light, it looks pink. Um, so really, really curious as to what you guys think it's, it's matured in. Um, but yeah, fully matured, 10 years old, which is surprisingly quite young for a Bamor independent bottling. Um, I know personally, I tend to see the older stuff, the 20 plus year olds. Um, uh, but yeah, we might, uh, no, I would say red. <laughs> I love when whiskey smell or taste like a color. <laughs> um, I think you need to see a doctor. <laughs> That's all you can get. Um, but yeah, I know it's a red. Uh, but yeah, red wine, definitely red wine. Mm. I was going to say a lot of red fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's got that like red toffee. Yeah. You've ever got red toffee apples? Yeah. That like red sugar layer on the outside that's actually not flavored at all, but your brain's convinced it's a flavor. Yeah, and it smells very whiny as well. It smells like those fancy wine restaurants where you walk in and you can just smell all the opened bottles of red wine. Hmm. But yeah, so um, but more distillery itself is really interesting because it's kind of um. It's a, a cult favorite and a collector's kind of whiskey. And I'm sure Dominic can back me up on the, on the collectability of the more. Um, but the distillery itself is like at the, in the heart of a town, right? In like the middle of the island near the airport. Um, and it's just it, like, it's literally the more distillery. And then further up the road, there's like houses and shops and stuff. And it's, so ingrained in the local area it's really really cool um but it's kind of the underdog of beam suntory like they don't really um i don't know it's it's not it's the quiet old refined kind of brand that they have compared to lafroy which is their you know um controversial i suppose and dram um i highly recommend if you guys haven't seen the 2015 um, opinions welcome campaign that they did for Lafroig. I highly recommend looking it up. I believe the word Sharknado full of socks, gym socks, um, was a description for Lafroig. Um, and they're a lovely chuckle to look at. Um, but yeah, Bamora is really, really interesting. Um, I will say it saved my butt because um, they gave me two driver's drams when I visited Bamora because it was closed. And as I was flying back home, <clears throat> they were like, oh, you've got whiskey in here. You can't have whiskey flying through um, Dubai. And they were like, what in this bag is whiskey? And I was like, just those two that say whiskey on them from Bumal. <laughs> and I managed to get away with a whole bunch of unlabeled hand fills because I'm like, no, they're, they're face oil, they're makeup. <laughs> So um, I have a debt of gratitude to the more distillery for saving other whiskey. <laughs> but yeah. Mm. What other notes are you guys getting? Because I remember, I, like, I get a little bit of strawberries. You know when you get those, like, slightly underripe strawberries? Not super sweet yet. Mm. So interesting. Mm. Pink musk stick, yeah, nice. 
what do we what do we think of this one are we are we feeling a bit more jovial about this one compared to the <laughs> the heartbreak of the last two bottlings better than the last two yeah yeah flavor um yeah. I don't know, maybe it's got something to do with the color as well so the last two there's very little color in those coming out of the cask so they're obviously as as i mentioned probably third fill fourth fill cask whereas there's a lot more flavor coming out of the cask on this um where it's just almost spirit for the other two so um yeah yeah i know exactly what you mean i will say as well it's got this um because Bamor is very inconsistent with their peating regime, but it's very reminiscent of during the 80s and 90s, they were running their condenser super hot and they were using, or they they were running it and they're using excess heat to heat the local swimming pool. So it affected the flavor slightly of Bamor during that time period. And you just had these like funky, chunky, really, really cool whiskeys. Um, and this reminds me of a of a sixteen year old port cask one I had from that period. I think it was like in nineteen ninety six, but yeah, super like. There's definitely funkiness, but it's not off putting. Like it's it's still approachable, and I think even the peat is approachable as well. Like, it still kind of feels in line with the the vibe of not offending <laughs> for repeated whiskey so yeah super super interesting all right well like i was saying before um we do have a couple of bottles that are um available not a whole lot but a couple um and we've got a discount for you guys tonight um so just popped it in the chat um, if you did want to pick up, I think it was the Brooklady, the Lecheg, and the Bamor um, are available, and you can use the code agency to get 10% off a bottle. Um, before you ask Dominic, no, there is no Lafroig. I know you want one. <laughs> I want one too. I'll fight you for it. <laughs> um, but yes, so we this is one of those tastings where it was it was very few bottles and we're like well we've got to take the opportunity to to crack into them and and taste them and see them and Dominic's already got some of course you bloody have um but yeah so it's it's always kind of nice to shine a spotlight on an independent bottler that we is kind of in the periphery of of what we see and and what we what we um can get our hands on and and obviously being able to get these bottles in from China, even though it was pain in the butt with customs, um, is uh, definitely very, very exciting. Um, hopefully we will see a couple more. Hopefully we see some Liquid Sun bottles come back. I highly, highly recommend if you ever see a bottle of Liquid Sun, buy it because um, I'll probably buy it off you at the very least. <laughs> but um, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see um, more of these in Australia, hopefully. Um, I don't know if there's an official importer or anything like that. But um, yeah, I think, um, gosh, I think that's about it for me. If you guys had any questions, any feedback, any thoughts, and I will run the poll as well, because even though I know what the answer is probably going to be, um, <laughs> it is always good to have your, um, your feedback in the poll for the rest of the guys so I can show it to the guys behind the scenes. Um, what are the Klein Leach and the Aardberg like? So um, the Aardberg, Ollie has tried it. He reckons it's very, very dirty, like very boggy, earthy, dirty vibes. Um, the Klein Leash, I don't know. Um, that, again, would you have to send a message to Ollie because I believe he's tried them. They rudely hoard all of the bottles up in Sydney. And I never get to try anything until I'm up there. <laughs> um, Dominic, how much do I know about the labels, like the artwork on the labels? Um, I'm not 100% certain. I know that they do work with a lot of local artists for their labels. Um, let me see if I can bring up the labels. Um, 
So it's just, yeah, no, no, go back, go back. This fish series is relatively new. Ah, don't know about the fish series. Let me see. Let's open her up. Do share screen. There we go. So, um, yeah, so these are uh, the labels from all of them. I know that they tend to try and keep them all um, together in, in like a cohesive visual series. Um, they did one which was, I think, Japanese geishas as well for the Tokyo Three Rivers bar. Um, but, and they did Mad Max themed ones for the Australian um, liquor library bottlings that they did. Um, so, yeah, it was really interesting to see. Um, like I said, I don't know. Fish series is relatively new. The 1990 Isla looks similar. Yeah, I, I don't know much other than they would probably be using local artists. Um, a lot of independent bottling brands either use local artists or they use um, copyright free images like High Spirits does. <laughs> if you've ever seen that magician series from High Spirits, they're all a, um, uh, they're all from images that are long since out of copyright, uh, which is the way to get around it. I will say for some of our bottlings, we use um, AI generated images, which is probably going to be the future of independent bottling artwork um, for new guys coming in. Uh, but yeah, there's a, I'm, I'm not 100% certain, Dominic, unfortunately, like I said, there is like next to no information about the brand, about who does the artwork or anything like that. They really keep it hush hush. Um, it's very annoying. And I like to think that I'm pretty good at hunting down information, but this was so much harder than it normally is. So, <laughs> alrighty. Well, I do not feel surprised at all um, by these results. <laughs> so, Love, love, love the Lafroy, and I love it as well. Um, which is now I can say I like five Lafroigs um, my entire career, so it's a it's a pretty good mark. Um, interesting interviews with Kirsten you can find. And I wasn't able to find, and I didn't have a lot of time either. <laughs> but yeah, thank you everybody for popping along. I know this is like a small little intimate gathering and whatnot and and thank you howard and michael and, and stuff for unmuting and chatting and all that um but yeah thank you so much guys hopefully hopefully you enjoyed hopefully honestly the lafroy was worth it <laughs> i think the lafroy was definitely worth it for this tasting um and i will now be hunting down that unicorn bottle but yeah, if you guys wanted to hang on for a little bit and chat, I've got a little bit of time and we can stop the recording. But otherwise, for the guys watching at home, thank you so much and, and have a good night. And yeah, I'll see you at the next tasting. So I will stop the record. Yes.